This is the problem from section 6-2, similar to your homework. Find the following areas, write the corresponding probabilities. I know that in the homework they encourage you to use the tables, but I want to encourage you to use your calculators. So this is a normal distribution, and in this particular case we're looking for z values, and whenever we deal with z values, we assume that our mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. This would then be called a standard normal distribution. So now if we're looking for the area to the right of this z value 1.25, we would like to write the probability as follows. I'll write p for probability and we have the z is greater than 1.25. So that describes this area to the right of 1.25. Now, in the calculator, we're going to call on the command called normal CDF. And the normal CDF would take two or four arguments. And let's just get used to using four arguments all the time. So it's going to take a minimum value. In this case, looking at the graph, our minimum value is 1.25. And then it's going to take a maximum value. Now, the normal distribution technically goes infinitely forever and the graph will never touch the x-axis. And so because of that asymptotic behavior, we have to consider this thing going all the way off to infinity. Unfortunately, the calculator doesn't have a concept of infinity, but if you put a really large number in there, then it'll assume that role. So the large number we can put is 1, and the E stands for scientific notation, so this is times 10 to the 99th power. So that's essentially 1 with 99 zeros, and that's going to end up being a huge number. And that would be close to infinity. So our arguments are going to be the low, the high, and then we have the mean, and in this case the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. So that's what we're going to put into our calculators. Let's go to our calculators. To call on the normal CDF, we're going to go to second function and distributions. And then the normal CDF is the second one. So there's a normal PDF here, which we will never use in this class. When we go to the normal distribution, we will always use a CDF function. So let's call on the CDF function. Our low is 1.25. Our high is 1. And then the E button is right above a comma, so I'll say second function comma. And then 99, that'll give you the 99 zeros, so that's going to be a huge number. Our mean is 0, and our standard deviation is 1 for this case. Now, if you don't put the mean and standard deviation, it's going to assume that this is going to be 0 and 1. So in some instructions, you might not have to put the 0 and 1 there. But for future references, I think it would be a good idea to always remember to put the mean and standard deviation in your normal CDF function call. So let's run this, and we get 0.1056. Generally, you want to round off to four decimal places because the table that they give you has up to four decimal places of accuracy. Okay? So that's our first one. Our second one is going to be similar. Let's get that set up. So let's see what's going to go in these slots over here. We have the probability, and here the shaded region is to the left of 0.25. So let's say z is less than 0.25. So this time, when you look at the graph, it looks like it's starting from negative infinity, and then it goes up. The, the low would be negative infinity, and the high would be 0.25. So don't forget the negative sign. Our infinity is 1 e to the 99. And then our maximum is 0 0.25. Our mean is 0. Our standard deviation is 1. So let's punch that into our calculator. Instead of retyping the whole thing, I'm going to say second function and entry, and then change the few things that I need to change. So just using your left and right arrows. I'm going to go ahead and delete this first part. And then I'm going to insert a negative sign here to overwrite the comma. That is my minimum. My maximum will come after that. 
So I'm going to press insert, second function insert, and then I'll say comma, and then 0.25 is our maximum. And we have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one, so that's good to go. And our area is going to be 0.5987. A couple of things to, to notice here. We have a, a small area over here, so this is like a 10-11% of the shaded region. This area over here is a little bit more than half, so half is 0.5, 50%, a little bit more than half. I have here almost 60%, so that makes sense. So one of the key things you should look at uh, between your graph and your answer is that they have to kind of agree with each other. All right, let's get our last one set up. So this time we have a region that's between two values of z. So let's write that mathematically as the value where the z goes between 0.25 and 1.25. So one way we can write that is we put the lesser value, 0.25 less than z less than 1.25. So that'll encompass those z values in between those. Because we have finite values, numbers, actual numbers here, that is easily identifiable as our minimum and our maximum. So our minimum is 0.25, our maximum is 1.25, and then we have the same mean and standard deviation. And then let's get our result for this one. I'm going to go ahead and recall my last entry and then change my values from 0.25 to 1.25 and then I have an extra 5 here I'm just gonna delete and then I'll run it and get our values we got 0.2956 so that's it that's how you would find these values that's how you would write the probability notation and this is the calculator command that you would you would call on and then um, this is how you would get your results. By the way, if we take a look at all these shaded regions over here and we add them all together, they should encompass all of the area under the curve. And when we're talking about a probability distribution, the whole area should equal a 1. So just for you to check, you can add all these up. They should be equal to 1 or at least really, really close to 1. Okay, hope that helps.